So welcome back. We've now defined what an orthogonal set is. And now what we want to do is kind of look at some more properties of orthogonal sets. And one of the reasons we like orthogonal sets is because of the following theorem, which says that if somebody hands you an orthogonal set of non-zero vectors in Rn, say u1 through up, then you actually get for free that those sets of vectors is also linearly independent. And because this is an important result, I'll walk you through the proof. Okay, And remember how to prove something is linearly independent. All right, so suppose that you had a linear combination equaling to the zero vector. Okay, what's our goal is we want to show that all of these scalars is zero. So if we can show that all of these scalars are zero, then we have shown that all of these vectors are linearly independent. Okay, now notice that for each i going from one to p, you can take our first equation and you can do the dot product of both sides with the vector ui. Okay, and you, the zero, the zero vector dotted with ui gives you a number zero right there. So let's look a little bit more closely about what's happening on the left-hand side here. Well, using the properties of the dot product, and let me go to that little result that we had. So using these properties here, you can show that this whole expression on the left-hand side will be equal, equal to the following. So you get C1, U1 dotted with U I. Uh, and then you have all the way up to C I dotted with itself, or C I times U I dotted with itself, all the way up to C P, U P dotted with U I equals to zero. Okay, and let's call this expression star because we'll, we'll come back to it in a second. Now, our set S is assumed to be uh, orthogonal. So all of these vectors are, are orthogonal. So that means that as long as we're not looking at this guy, ui dotted with itself, all of the other vectors are orthogonal to each other. All right. So, but the set S is orthogonal, so uj dotted with ui is equal to zero for j not equal to i. So that means that as long as we're not looking at this middle term, all the other terms become zero. So the equation star now becomes zero plus plus all the way to zero, a whole bunch of zeros. Then we have the term involving the dot product of ui with itself, and then a whole bunch of zeros, and that's all equal to zero. Right. Now, since ui does not equal to zero, the vector ui doesn't equal to zero, the dot product of ui with itself doesn't equal to zero. So what we have is this term here is equal to zero. This number right here is not zero. So this forces ci to be zero. So ci has to be zero. But this was true for any particular i. So what we have is all c1, c2 up to cp is equal to zero. And then that's another way of saying S is linearly independent. Just finishing the proof. So just to go back, what we have here is we take any set of vectors that happen to be orthogonal, and as long as they're not, there's no zero vector in there, those vectors are also linearly independent. So let's tie some of this terminology now with the notion of bases. 
So a basis S for Rn is an orthogonal basis if S is an orthogonal set of vectors and an orthonormal basis if S is orthonormal. So it contains an orthonormal set of vectors. That means they're orthogonal and they all have length one. So we already saw that E1 through En is orthonormal, but because E1 through En is also a basis for Rn, we have that the standard basis is an orthonormal basis for Rn. So is an orthonormal basis for Rn. So we now have reached a stage where we can talk about bases where they have the additional property of either being orthogonal or orthonormal. In the last part of today's lecture, we'll, we'll explain why it's, these bases have some particularly nice properties. So I'll, I'll explain that in the last part of today's lecture.